What's up, Design Family? Welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the sample process, especially within the confines of sportswear and activewear production. If you've ever wondered what the right way to approach sample making and sample production is, then watch this video. We're gonna run you through it super fast and super easy. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. In a nutshell, sample production is essentially the creation of a prototype. Once you've designed and articulated your garment and you have the final factory ready tech pack, ready to go to your factory, you're now the most exciting process. You've put in the time and the effort to have the tech pack created that accurately reflects your vision for your business and the brand that you're looking to build. And now it's time to create a physical embodiment of that tech pack. What do you do? And this is something that a lot of people go into haphazardly without truly understanding what a sample is, what it's meant to achieve, and ultimately what the procedure is for going through the different phases in order to get to the main batch production, which let's face it, at the end of the day, we're creating these businesses in order to share these garments with the world, not just one-offs or prototypes. We do wanna take these garments to market. So how do we get there? I'm gonna discuss that. First, we have to understand the different phases of sampling. There are four major types of samples to consider, and they essentially come chronologically within the process of ordering. The first is your proto sample or your prototype sample. The second is your fitting sample or your fit sample. Your third is your pre-production sample. And the fourth and final is your shipment sample. We'll start off at the very beginning. You have a factory ready to fact, you've sent it to the manufacturer, you like their communication, they're asking the right questions, they seem to understand what you're looking for, they provide you with the quotation, you've approved it, it's now time to make samples. The first sample that you'll want to make is a proto sample. Proto sample is exactly what it sounds like, it's a prototype sample. There are some limitations to proto samples and there are some benefits. The benefits here is that proto samples are meant to showcase your garment in its physical embodiment with as many details as possible within the limitations of the details. So what are some of these limitations? Let's just say you have a pair of leggings in five different colors and you're serious about creating or bringing to market these five different colors. You've specified the prints, you've specified the accessories like the hand tags, the care labels, and you've specified the fit, the paneling, any other garment construction techniques like the flat lock seams, the seamless welding on the ankles, so on and so forth. What is the procedure from here? The proto sample will serve to showcase one, the type of fabric that you're looking at using. If it's an 88 nylon, 12 spandex with a certain GSM, you want to be able to test that in person. However, the limitation here is if you have five colors, you won't be able to get this proto sample in these five colors. Why is that? The limitation is really money and overhead. These factories, when they're trying to secure the business, will not go ahead and purchase an entire fabric roll in a custom dyed Pantone color in order to create one or two or three samples. They'll want to be able to offer as much flexibility within the limitations. You cannot just dye enough fabric for one sample, especially if you're going with yarn dyeing or, or actually even fiber dyeing. It's just not economically viable. So chances are you're going to have to go with what is available on the market. And typically with these stock fabrics, they tend to be either in black, white, or gray, basically very popular colors that the factory might have in stock of your specific composition, your specific weight. There may be, even be some small adjustments in the weight and the actual compositions, depending on your requirements and the amount of quantity that you're putting out. The higher the quantity, the more flexibility that you're gonna have later on because you're gonna be investing more money into the batch production. You'll benefit from the economies of the economies of the economies of scale, and ultimately you'll be able to get much closer to the very, very specifics. The limitations of production in general is something that we'll discuss in a different video. However, here just know that your proto sample will feature the following. It'll feature one, pretty much the correct fabric, 
It'll feature it in a stock color, whether it's black, white, whatever is available. It'll feature the prints if you have any heat transfer prints, screen prints, provided sometimes that the factories may ask you to pay a mold fee or the upfront mold fee that is required to make one of these. It depends again from factory to factory and the quality of prints being used and the types of prints being used, whether they're just standard vinyl heat transfer or silicone prints. Those setup fees may exist and it's something that you might want to ask, especially if you have a final tech pack. These are things that sometimes can only be figured out once you have your final tech pack that's ready to go with all your details. It will feature the correct fit. It should feature any good or correct final construction techniques. Let's just say you have a panel structure and you specified that the panels are secured with overlock stitches versus plain seams and you've specified that the ankle hem is secured with a seamless welding versus a traditional folded hem with an overlock stitch reinforcement. So these details should be shown. The fit should also be correct. We typically offer it or we typically order these proto samples in one size because bear in mind that as a small business you will be charged for every sample you create, especially if this is your first foray with your brand or, your, or the factory that you're working with. They don't know you, you don't know them, you wanna secure the business. However, they wanna make sure that they're not over investing when the brand or the client hasn't committed yet to the long term. As you build up that relationship, you'll be able to have more flexibility, but let's just assume that this is your first time dealing with a brand. We recommend getting a sample in the correct size. Let's just say you as a designer are a size medium and you're the one who's gonna be testing them out, testing the fit, testing the um, athletic quality, testing the durability. Order them in the size that you typically wear. If you have someone else that you want to be wearing your garment, you can order another size to test between the grading of sizes. This is something that is nice to have, however it's not an absolute necessity, especially if you're working with a designer that's able to offer you sizing grading, so how the sizes move from small to medium to large, which is a major plus, and it's something we highly recommend you include in your tech packs because it will save you a lot of time, money, and effort creating those different samples when you can just rest assured that you have a designer that knows how to grade between a small to a medium to a large. If you guys want us to do a video on grading, leave a comment below and hopefully we'll be able to get to that. But a proto sample will also include the prints like I mentioned. It may include some basic accessories. It won't typically include like woven care labels or other woven products just because there is also an overhead to creating those. You may be, if you absolutely need them, you may be charged a mold fee as well for these because you haven't committed to the production and you can get them included and ultimately it's just meant to give you a visual representation of your physical product that is as close as possible as the final product within the limitations of production and the fact that you still haven't placed a deposit or a significant commitment to the order. Once you receive your proto sample we highly recommend you check the workmanship make sure the fitting is correct so these samples should be made according to your specs do bear in mind that humans are ultimately making these samples and some tolerance, especially in sizing, is typically permitted and that's usually between 0.5 inches to 1 inch depending on the size of the measurement, like the actual span of the measurement. Waist measurements might have a bit more tolerance than ankle measurements. So an ankle measurement that's specified as 3.5 as the half width, you should typically allow to like 3.675, 3.75 or, or you know down if it's a waist measurement, allow around 0.5 to 0.75. Um, of inches of tolerance depending on you know the specific fit that you're going for. You want to measure out, make sure that the fit is correct. If you need to make any adjustments, you should do so. Update the tech pack, specify these adjustments, whether they're fit adjustments, logo size adjustments, um, the placement of care labels, because blanks will typically be placed in areas that have care labels. That's something that you might want to consider. If the care label is placed on the correct side of the hip, if the care label is placed in the correct um, proportions, so on and so forth. Use the prototype as a way for you to consistently visualize what your final product is going to look like. Once you have your proto sample, you're happy with it. Let's just say you're working in a niche market where fit is extremely important and you don't want to consistently be paying for full-fledged samples, which can be sometimes costly, understandably because there is a high investment from the factory side for them. You may want to create the second type of sample, which is more distilled down to just the cuts and the material and that's called a fitting sample. If you're creating the perfect t-shirt t-shirt with the perfect fit and you definitely wanna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that may be something that you wanna look into. However, it's not always recommended because if you have a good tech pack, you'll be able to achieve the right fit from the first 
for maximum the second proto sample. But if you are someone that's very, 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 very specific with their samples, you may want to look at a fit sample and essentially make the adjustments of that. Fit sample will only include the fabric and the stock color and the construction techniques and nothing else. It would include prints, it doesn't include um, any labels, it doesn't include any accessories, any hang tags. In a sense, it's similar to that, but it's a more distilled version of the proto sample. You figure out your fit, you figure out your accessories, you're extremely happy. Where do you go from here? You go on to the third type of sample. The third type of sample is the PP sample. This is really where you see 100% of your work come to life. A PP sample is usually, or it's always after you've placed the deposit with the manufacturer, you've signified your commitment to doing long-term business and you've essentially placed a financial deposit on the order. Deposits range and it depends on the supplier and your relationship with them. They can be anywhere as low as 20%, they can be anywhere as high as 100% upfront depending on the size of the order and the amount of rapport you have with the supplier. So this is something you have to do on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't want to give you the false information and for that to be incorrect. So once you have your proto sample and your fit sample figured out, you're happy, you go on to your PP sample. You've placed your deposit on the order and now the manufacturer is able to apply or actually buy all of the fabrics, the accessories, the trims, the labels, the, the, the tags, anything that is needed to construct this garment in its fullest form. That will be the fabrics, there will be the hang tags, there will be the care labels, the neck tags, the prints, um, the vinyl prints, any other small accessories, if there are silicone tags, if there are heat transfer tape to secure the hems, so on and so forth. Any of these small accessories that may have not been included in the proto samples because they're too customized and they're not available. If they're also, if you have uh, customized zippers, if you have customized zipper pulls, so on and so forth. The PP sample will be first, once you place your deposit, they'll acquire all these materials. Depending on the time of year, it may take around 30 to 45 days to acquire all these materials and they'll put them together in your PP samples. Your PP samples will then be made in the different colors that you have. Let's just say you have four colors on your leggings they'll be able to make them into four different colors in a, in a size of your choice in order to test out. And now you'll be able to see how your garment looks in the full color scale that you have. Black, red, green, so on and so forth. You'll be shipped out the PP sample in its full glory with the correct packaging if necessary, uh, with the correct tags, with the correct prints, in the correct color. And essentially here the goal is to green light the sample. No changes of fit or uh, labels or logos or fabric type or color should be made at this stage. You have already invested, you've already bought all of these materials. So at this point, you can't go back on your colors. You can't be like, oh, I don't like this color, I wanna change it. So the question to you is, how did I confirm the color? So this comes down to two things. One, using Pantone standards in your tech packs. So knowing what Pantones you're working with and two, at the proto stage, seeing lab dips of these custom colors. Yes, you're gonna receive your, your garment in a black colorway. However, if you have different colors, you can request the factory send you lab dips of the different colors. Black, red, green, purple, violet, whatever it may be. And these lab dips will usually be sent in sets of three per color. Lab dips usually have different shades and you'll wanna green light which shade you want of each of the different custom colors because once those are greenlit, that will be applied towards the fabric that we use in the main batch production. At that point, you're locked in. There's no going back, there's no saying, oh, I don't like that shade, I want to go a shade lighter. That's the whole point of lab dips and working with Pantone colors. It sounds scary, but it's a lot less scary than it is, especially the way that a lot of these professional factories situate themselves. They give you as much information up front, and if you have the right factory tech pack, then you're really gonna be in no position to be worried or scared because you're gonna have seen how these garments are gonna look in a digital format before investing into your physical batch production. You essentially receive your PP sample, green light it, and then you're off to the races. The factory has the green light in order to create the batch production. The batch production is basically the full scale production that takes around 30 days, 45 days, take a little bit more, could take a little less, depending on the factory. However, in our experience, that's what it takes. And then you have your main batch production. Before that's shipped out, in the event that a brand or a client has a lot of quantities, we're talking about in the thousands, they can request a shipment sample of randomly selected items from the batch production. This is done for quality control testing to make sure that everything has been done according to spec. 
right? You don't want to do all the work and spend all the time, money and effort to create the samples and then ultimately for the factory to go back and essentially not do what they're meant to do. So that's it. the shipment sample is a way for you to test and to make sure that the quality is on point, that everything and the details are as specified. You receive your shipment sample, you essentially give the factory the green light to dispatch, to export the, quality, the product to you, to wherever you may be, your warehouse or your distribution center, and take delivery and start to sell. The sample process sounds like it can be quite complicated. In reality, if you guys follow these steps and make sure to be effective in your communication with factories, any adjustments that you may have, you're going to be able to avoid a lot of heartache down the road. And a factory that works with you and is willing to communicate with you is one worth having. In our experience, we'll also, we'll also give people the warning not to overdo these samples because samples are quite labor intensive. Factories don't make any money from them because they are trying to charge them at as affordable rates as they can in order to secure the business. It's sort of like when a new tech company or Netflix comes out with an introductory pricing scheme in order to get their customers in. It's the same thing with factories and their samples. They're trying to offer them at pretty much cost or sometimes they lose some money on it in order to secure the business long term. So the factories that give you these samples also want to secure the business and it's your role to also effectively communicate with them what changes need to be made and to be direct and respectful in order to keep the process moving forward because at the end of the day, they want to make the garments and you want the garments in order to sell them to your amazing customers. So make sure to stay on the ball and to make sure to communicate effectively and to not take the fact that these samples are being made by people that are working as hard as they can in order to create these garments as accurately as possible as per your tech bag. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys got some value out of it, please consider smashing a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. We put out a ton of great content on a week to week basis. It means the absolute world to us if you joined us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.